about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we waited for Everybody, John here from Tutor to You, welcoming you along to another study live stream for GCSE history. Uh, big welcome to any of you who are watching live. I'm just looking at my little clock here. Tell me we've got a few people there. Good evening to you all, uh, and also uh, another warm welcome to anybody who's watching this on replay. And we know that hundreds of people have been doing just that over the last few weeks. And the last few weeks, of course, we've been looking at various issues relating to the Weimar Republic, hyperinflation, all the uh, the, the putches and so on but tonight we're going to talk about Stresemann and the golden years there were apparently some golden years during the Weimar Republic so that's what we're going to be chatting about tonight if you are watching live we would love to see any thoughts and suggestions that you've got particularly when we're asking some questions and we've got about 30 minutes or th between 30 and 35 minutes worth of activities and input from Rocky and Duncan Rocky and Duncan if I can introduce you both how are you both tonight very well thank you very well thanks that's good. Rocky in the middle of the screen and Duncan to the right there. Um, uh, well, I think we may be ready. Gents, shall, shall I get started? Yeah, let's get cracking. Let's go for it. OK, so we're going to start with a 60 second challenge. So this is where you have 60 seconds to match the letters on the left of the screen with the numbers on the right. And what we have are some key events from the yeah, years when Stresemann was a key figure in the German government. Um, and basically, you need to try and decide when these key events happened. OK, shall we have a look at them? Here we have. So A to F are the um, events. One to six are the years. Um, and let's see how you do. Just You just type in A1 if you think that's the that happened in 1928. Um, or B6, whatever it might be. Okay, 
Good luck. I'll see you in 60 seconds. Okay, so, a few thoughts there. Shall we have a look at the correct answer? There we go. So, as you will see on the screen, the they were in chronological order, so that would have helped if you could have worked that out. Some of you may have recognised that, some of you may have spotted that. Um, so the new currencies, 1923-24, the Dawes Plan 24, the Carno Treaty Pact 25, Joining the League of Nations, 26. The kellogg Briand Pact happened about breakfast time. No, it didn't. It was 1928. And the Young Plan in 1929. You're going to find out lots more about these key events in the coming activities. So I'm not going to say more about them now. I'm going to hand over to Rocky for a conveyor belt quiz. Thanks, Duncan. So evening, everyone. Hope you're well. So the conveyor belt quiz, as it says on the screen, you've got one minute to answer the six questions that will pass by. So these shed a little bit more light on the events that Duncan's introduced. So if you feel confident, you can just throw in numbers, statistics or, you know, key individuals, if that's relevant to the answer in the chat box. And then after a minute, we'll review those answers. OK, best of luck. They do fly by very quickly. So hopefully, as I say, you've got picked up a few of those, at least when I go through these now, it'll give you a bit more of an understanding of the impact of these particular developments. So let's have a look at the, the first one, please. So August 24, a new independent bank was created and it was called the Reichsbank. Brilliant. So it meant that if we look at what happened before with hyperinflation, the government obviously would print loads of money. This independent bank um, had was under sort of less influence from the government, so it could therefore manage economic affairs um, effectively. And this was also impacted by the, the currencies, the new currencies that were introduced. Um, they were pegged to the value of gold within uh, Germany and pegged to the value of uh, German gold reserves, so it limited the amount that they could print. So the Reichsbank established in 24. Thank you very much. Next one. Dawes Plan. Personally, I think this is one of the most important things that Stresman achieves in 1924. So 800 million marks loaned to Germany by the USA, and then that is invested into German industry, which helps with employment and industrial output, which ties into the next question. 
Now, this is a seems like a complicated question, but it's after an easy answer. It doubles. Basically, industrial output doubles between 23 and 28, and you actually see year-on-year -year wage increases as well, generally, for the German population. Number four. Okay, two main borders. This ties in with what we've looked at before, France and Germany. Belgium's borders also were confirmed under the Locarno Pact. But the reason this is important is if you uh, think back to when we covered hyperinflation or the start of hyper hyperinflation and how the, how the French occupied the Ruhr, Locarno was a way of re-establishing sort of friendly relations, re-establishing the borders of the respective countries. The idea being that France would not occupy the Ruhr again if, you know, Germany was to default on reparations payments or anything like that. Although they were, they were a lot less likely to following the 800 million marks loaned to them via the Doors plan. Okay, next question, please. How many countries were part of the kellogg Brion Pact? Now, I've seen a lot of answers on, in various books and websites, but 62, including Germany. That's the one that I normally use. It's the one that's in sort of the, um, the official textbook, if you like. So 62 countries involved, which gives you an idea how Germany is becoming a big player on the international scene now. Lovely. And the next one. October 1929, the role of the Young Plan. That's it. So payments are set at 25% of what they originally were. So they were originally £6.6 .6 billion, and the Young Plan reduces them still further and helps extend um, Germany's time that they get to, to pay um, the reparations back, which means that money can then be reinvested into the economy. So Stresman makes lots of really, really important agreements that help with German Germany's um, recovery. Fantastic. Well done. Okay, the next one. As I tend to do in previous rounds, I tend to sort of give away the answers. So let's see if you were listening. <laughs> so you've got 30 seconds to answer the question on screen. There are three questions you will face um, and you want to think about the impact of some of these um, achievements under Stresman. Okay, so we're going to have the first question, please. Why was the new currency of the Renter Mark in 1923 trusted? Best of luck. go so why was the new currency trusted pegged to the value of german gold so they have the renton mark as a new currency in 1923 and then they eventually have the reichsmark established in 1924 once the reichsbank reichsbank is set up and essentially both those currencies are, are pegged to the value of gold or, or german um, gold reserves which limits the amount they can print so they don't fall into that trap of hyperinflation again Okay, why did the Doors Plan help ease tension between France and Germany? So you might want to think about what the Doors Plan gave to Germany and why Germany and France had so much tension in the first place and try and make a connection there. 30 seconds, best of luck. How did we do? So 
with that money, we know some of that money uh, helps Germany pay back certain reparations to France. That eases tension because obviously we know France occupied the Ruhr in the first place because Germany defaulted on their reparation um, payments. So obviously we can start to see things come, you know, come into play here with previous learning from the hyperinflation. And so what you eventually see is French troops withdraw from the Ruhr. Germany then can get back to using that sort of um, those coal and uh, steel reserves within that region and have that or, or use that, if you like, within their own economy rather than using sort of the benefits of the Ruhr to, to, to if you like, take place of payments or be given to the French in lieu of payment because they defaulted. So that injection of cash from America, some of it's given to France, this eases tension. And then the last question, what was the significance of Germany becoming a League of Nations member in 1926? You might want to think a little bit generally about what being a member of an international community could mean. Best of luck. Okay, significance of Germany becoming uh, a League of Nations member was ultimately they became more trusted within the international community. It was symbolic of a sort of a new inclusive Europe. If we think back to the Treaty of Versailles and the fact it was a dictated peace and Germany had no say in, you know, the, what post-war Germany or post-war Europe looked like, the League of Nations represented something different. And by being a member of that international community, they could then start to make further trade agreements with other countries as part of the League of Nations. So hopefully that sheds a bit more light on the situation. You've got me again, I'm afraid. <laughs> on balance, to what extent were the Stresman years golden? Now we've just focused on nothing but positivity up to this point. So I want you to think if you've got a couple of arguments in, in the beginning to suggest that they were golden. Now you could um, repeat some of the arguments that we've already gone through, or if you've already covered this in class um, at your school, you might want to think about other ways in which the Stresman years could be seen as golden. So I'll give you maybe just 10, 15 seconds just to see if you can think about a few ideas. Feel free to put anything in the chat box. Doesn't have to be full sentences. I was thinking if I were if I were typing something in the chat box I was thinking maybe something on political stability you haven't got the sort of very rapid chopping and changing of of um of, of sort of who's in charge and all that kind of thing it's, it feels like a more stable period politically as well as all those positive things that we've talked about already is that would that be a fair yeah. point uh, yeah absolutely I think that's a I think that's a very good point I mean you tend to see in times of economic uncertainty people do splinter off and look for extreme uh, solutions with the left and right. So um, I think certainly that is part of it. That's good. Should we, should we try and have a quick look to suggest they were golden? There you go, Duncan, spot on, 10 out of 10. <laughs> so the Nazi by 1928, I love this statistic. Again, I'm a bit of a sort of a geek for numbers and connections. I think this is a lovely statistic to throw into an answer because if you look at the 2.8% figure, it's exactly the same as 1928, but with a little decimal point in the middle. So these are little things that you can throw into exams whereby using that content will really set you apart from other candidates. So they have just around 2.8% of the vote, the Nazis, and that's because of that economic stability. And then likewise, that year-on-year -year, um, improvement in industrial output and wages translate in, translates into more jobs. And then that money generated from tax is reinvested. And I've, I've used another sort of uh, link to a different topic that you may have already covered. That is then... Um, invested into housing, welfare, the arts. And so you see a bit of cultural renew, um, a renewal rather, sorry, um, within the Weimar period. Okay, so then, obviously, there must be some kind of counter argument. Not everything can be perfect. 
So what do we think we could use as a counter argument to suggest that Stresman's years weren't necessarily golden? Think about if wages increase, what else might increase? Think also, you know, we've focused a lot on industrial improvements and trade relations. What about the farming industry? What about, you know, rural life and agricultural production? Is everything perfect? It didn't last, did it? I mean, that's one thing to... <laughs> no, very, no, very true. You, you could also think about what, what is all this stability essentially based on? I mean, it comes back down to the doors plan, doesn't it? Who is propping up the German economy? Okay, should we have a little look? Germany was still weak. Absolutely. So agricultural progress doesn't match the industrial progress. When we talk about cereal produce, we're talking about grains, basically, you know, for, for wheat and bread. So the population are, are well fed. It never gets close to pre-World War I levels where Germany was one of the strongest um, economies and countries generally in the world. So that's a problem that Stresemann has to contend with as well as the rest of Germany. And then even though wages increase, so does the cost of living, because that's, if you like, the what inflation is generally we start to see you know costs of goods trying to meet those rising prices now that's nothing like hyperinflation but nevertheless rising wages rising cost of living means that you still get some dissatisfaction amongst workers and lastly like i said this is built on shaky foundations because it's all dependent on that american money to sort of lay those foundations if you like for sort of german recovery so that's a that's a good task to do because it's potentially a 16 16 marker if you get those interpretations that look at things going well in that time period versus things going not so well it's a it's a good way of uh, applying own knowledge to those interpretations as a way of saying well Stresman years were golden on the other hand things weren't all as rosy as they at first appear okay well done if you've got any of those Great stuff. So we've got a picture grid now. So what you're going to see are six questions. As you answer the questions, it'll reveal a little bit of a picture, an image, and you've got to try and see if you can work out what that image is. OK, so see how you get on. Do do type into the chat window if you're watching live. You have a bit longer if you're watching on catch up. OK, so let's have a look at the first question. Why were nationalist right-wing parties critical of Stresemann? Okay, it might tie in a little bit with what Rocky was just talking about a moment ago. That might be a clue. Um, there might be other reasons as well, of course. What do we think? What could be the right-wing criticism of Stresemann's government? Shall we have a look? Right, they saw his willingness to work with the French and to depend on the USA as a weakness. Yeah, they want to see Germany being strong and everything, you know, Germany depending on Germany, essentially. Um, and so depending on foreign powers, they could present as being a weakness. Okay, shall we have a look at what's behind that? Oh, I wonder what it is. What do you reckon? Any ideas? Do put your guesses for what that image is in the uh, chat window. Why did the era become less associated with the November criminals of 1918? So if you remember, we talked about the kind of the stab in the back, the November criminals or the German politicians who essentially agreed to the Versailles Treaty and to the terms of the um, peace. They were described as the November criminals that they stabbed Germany in the back. Why in this era... Is there less of an association with those with that? Any ideas? Hmm. Shall we have a look? So President Ebert died, um, and um, War General Paul von Hindenburg was voted in. Um, who, who you know was more popular with um, veterans, etc. So, yeah, you, you've 
physically moved on from from the the people um, associated with that. Okay, let's have a look at what that piece represents. We've had a suggestion in the chat window that it could be a coin. Could be, couldn't it? That looks a bit like a coin or a medal or something like that. Okay, the Young Plan extended reparations to 1988. Wow. What did it mean for the taxpayer? What did that mean for the taxpayer that the reparations were extended? So reparations were, were extended so long. What do we reckon? It's not a trick question. It's, I think, what, what impact that would have. So Amelia is just in tax increase to pay back the loan. And that's an interesting one because obviously the Dawes plan involved, you know, very um, significant uh, loan, very high loan from the Americans. When we're talking about this extending the reparations, so they're paying it off over a longer period of time, could be the opposite. Shall we have a look? Yeah, taxes were reduced as Germany could stagger out their reparations payments, so they didn't have to pay as much back as quickly. Um, although it is a good point that they, you know, debts were increasing in other ways because they were, you know, they were borrowing large sums of money. Um, shall we have a look there? We've also had a suggestion that it could be an Olympic medal. It definitely appears to be someone's face on a piece of metal. <laughs> um, so Stresemann himself was aware of German dependence on America. What did he say of Germany's recovery during this time? So a sort of phrase that he used in relation to this. Does anyone, is this ringing any bells? I want to suggest something. Should we have it's a, a brilliant quote. I love it's it. It's a rare. It is a good quote. It is a good quote. Shall we see what it is? Germany was dancing on a volcano. That is a very good quote, isn't it? What did he mean by that, um, Rocky? Well, just the idea that, you know, p potentially like a volcano erupts and like a volcano mm. explodes and it can cause lots of devastation. If anything happens to America, then Germany are going to suffer. And that happened well, once the Wall Street... Once the Wall Street crash occurred in um, oh October nineteen twenty nine, but I've just realised I may have given away something. <laughs> I think you may have given away something then as well. But anyway, it's okay. It's always good to give <laughs> give some Let's trailers. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler okay. Alert. Let's have a look. See if that's helped us. If anyone's good at um, Roman numerals and that kind of thing, that might might be helpful. Um, Stresman died at the beginning of October. What did he? Die of. We've had a suggestion in the uh, in 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 the chat window that the person on the picture looks a little bit Swedish. That's an in, that's interesting. It's not it's it's not um, Benny from ABBA. I'll, 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 uh, <laughs> we'll keep it. We'll keep an eye on that. Could be. Could be. Um, what did Stresman die of at the beginning of October? Any ideas? Let's have a look. What did he do? A heart attack. Okay, so he died of a heart attack. Um, let's have a look at that last, well, not quite the last, second to last bit. Ah. Well done, Amelia. Amelia. Oh, yeah, sorry, Amelia got it. Yes, it was a health issue, heart attack. And I do think uh, the um, Swedish clue does appear to be helpful there because that. Would appear to say Alfred Nobel, Nobel, who you know, was a Swedish gentleman, so that might well <laughs> give the uh, answer of what that, what this is that we're looking at. All of Stresemann's hard work was undone in October 1929. Why? Now this is the one way of where you're paying attention, because there was a, a very big clue to this earlier on. What happened in October 1929 that destroyed the shaky foundations that this uh, improved situation was built upon? 
cause the volcano to erupt. Yeah, well done, Amelia. It was the Wall Street crash. And that will reveal the last bit. So because Germany depended on America, America crashing meant the Germany crash too. And what is that image? I think we've got very close to an answer in the chat window. Let's have a look. It is the Nobel Peace Prize. And Stresemann collected one in 1926 for his work as German foreign minister. Okay. That's very good, isn't it? All right. Well done if you spotted that. And the final activity, we've got some key terms, terms that have come up um, throughout this uh, session. What we've done is we've switched the vowels around. Uh, I try and I'll try and pronounce them. I, oh, but they don't really work as words anymore when I do try and pronounce them. But I'll have a go. But you need to work out what the actual word is. So the doers plun, the doers plun. What do we reckon the doers plun actually is? So there is all key terms that we've talked about today. Yeah, well done. It's the doors plan. Very good. So you can see what we're doing here. You can see if you can get this next one. The Likerni Pukt. So the vowels needs changing to different vowels to get us the right answer. It's not the Likerni Pukt. It is the Lacano Pact. Oh, well done, Amelia. You got that one. Very good. Um, next one. Loigio if nitains. Loigio Very good. If, if nitains. Anyone know what Loigio if nitains could be? What happened in 1926? Hmm. Loads of things happened in 1926. <laughs> so, so general strike no no it's not it's it's um uh it is shall we have a look it's the league of nations oh well done amelia got it again yeah on fire here amelia well done okay another one the kaleg breened pect I reckon Amelia's going to get this one as well, but should we see if someone else can nip in there first? God, he's going to be the fast, fastest finger first. What are the scores? Charles G. Dawes. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've, been meaning to, I've, been, I've been building up to that one all, all, the, <laughs> all the session. Okay. <laughs> it was my breakfast pun. I did a breakfast pun on this earlier. Um, that should help with the first bit. It is, shall we see, the Kellogg or Kellogg Briand Pact. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Din Kong An Ivalchina. I don't know what la I don't know what language I'm speaking, but Din Kong An Ivalchina. I've decided to, I've decided to pronounce the C in a sort of is a kind of Italian way there. I don't really know why. Um <laughs> Din Kung Anne Valcina. Could be Latin, couldn't it? The last bit sounds kind of Latin. Um, any idea? We just heard the phrase. Stresman used it to talk about um, Germany's um, precarious reliance on America. Yeah, let's have a look. It was dancing on a volcano. Okay. And just the usual reminder that there are some really useful study notes on the Tutor to You website, which you can visit by clicking on that QR code. If you've got a smartphone, you can scan it with your um, camera. And we do have a range of useful resources including a uh, revision guide and exam buster on this topic okay and some great ones on some other topics as well and that's it and well thank you very much for all your contributions this evening it's 
and we uh, got uh, in you, on time. Uh, uh, brilliant. <laughs> yes, we're, we're just over the, the 30 minute mark. And you're not wrong, uh, Duncan, some really good answers. Uh, you, yeah, and you were right as well. Amelia was absolutely on fire tonight, was she? Mm-hmm. Also, listening to uh, the little clues that Rocky was giving before the questions came out, which I thought was uh, somebody who's, who's, who's heard you before, Rocky, haven't they? Uh, <laughs> they uh, fantastic stuff. I, I, I guess um, what. When we've been looking at this over the last uh, few sessions, it's it seems to be like one disaster after another, heading towards the inevitable of, that we know about in terms of the rise of Hitler and therefore the Second World War eventually. But actually, that that session gives us a bit of a a flavour of actually there was an opportunity for Germany to to come out of that 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 really bad period and actually start to become um, uh, advanced again and and their economy to recover and to become politically stable and and that was sort yeah. of happening during that period is, is that yeah fair, and to become a, yeah and to kind of be normalized as a as an international yeah. you know as a member of the international community yeah because the, the mm-hmm. league of nations hadn't actually been around that long had it when they, when they were allowed to join only for a few years or so have, have i got that right as well yeah yeah and i, I mean the league of nations is, is quite weak anyway due, throughout that period because america are not a member they're quite isolationist in terms of their foreign policy but yeah symbolically it's very important that the the league of nations is uh also, rather sorry germany are part of the league of nations but yeah, it's, it's very new i think once that wall street crash happens i mean there's another quote when america sneezes the world catches a cold once the wall street crash happens and germany suffers most of all because they're dependent on uh, American loans, it's almost that moment for the Nazis to say, "We told you, yeah, we told yeah. you not to rely yeah. on other countries," yeah. and then you yes. see their rise from that. Absolutely, you know, of course, history has this uh, tendency to repeat itself, doesn't it? Uh, mm. Thinking about what happened at the end of the first decade of the century and uh, and uh, what was going on in America there and how, how that had an impact as well. As always, absolutely fantastic stuff. Really fascinating, really useful, I'm sure, for those of you taking your GCSE in history. A quick reminder that the uh, slides that we've been using as part of the PowerPoint display tonight, they are downloadable as soon as I've I've finished uh, recording this session. And uh, this whole session will be available to view again if you wanted to look at it again and take a little bit more time over some of those questions which were flashing past very quickly. Uh, Cheers to both gentlemen there. Thank you tonight. That's really uh, useful stuff and, and, and really interesting. And thanks for your usual contributions there, guys. Um, I think we're back next Monday again, aren't we? Are we all? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we will see you next Monday. We'll take the story on a bit further. Yeah. See you all next Monday then, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.